most intangible assets, security and law and order. Today, economies are driven by this intangible assets. If you tackle it aggressively, invest in your human capital, which is very low, 168 today, Nigerians are uneducated. You need to invest in it. The more money you put in education, the greater your economy. You open that up, and then you deal with the issue of your most critical infrastructure, power. Nigeria is a country of 200 million people generating only 4,000 megawatts of electricity. When South Africa is generating 50,000, and yet declaring this. So these are critical areas you must invest intangible assets, two of them, security, number two, law to have a regulatory environment to attract investors, then education, and you put your money you. in power. You turn the country around. A country, a country, Nigeria as a country, please, Nigeria as a country, in 2021, our total export, a country of 200 million people with a land size of 923,000, our total export using the rate of exchange today is about $30 billion for 200 million people, including oil. Compare it with a country like Vietnam, 100 million people, half of our population, living in 331 square kilometers of land. A third of our land, the total export last year, without oil, 312 billion. So a country of 100 million people, you recruit 10% of their export. You need to manufacture and export okay, and end dollars to stabilize Naira. You cannot build on a faulty foundation. Tell me why Nigeria cannot have state police. We have a security problem. Masari in, in Kastina had just said a few days ago that the entire Kastina state have about 5,000 policemen, that in some stations you have 30 police with 10 guns. What a country. Why can't we have state police? And let everybody police the state, give the governor's power to police their state and hold them responsible. That's number one. What is the other government doing with the education? Why are they controlling education? Every state should be able to deal with their education. If you want to educate your people, we will support you and you do that. So we need to restructure this foundation and make it more productive, competitive for the entire country. For me, I remain eternally grateful to you for what you did for me to be here and everything. Our topic today is well, democratic transition in the 21st century Nigeria, 2023 and beyond. I think it's for great people like you or people like Chimamanda invited. But for me as a trader, I'll try to contribute in my only two way, the way I think we should go. For me, democracy have a simple description. Government of the people, by the people, for the people. That means everything about democracy is the people. And transition means changing from one thing to the other. And for me, Nigeria needs urgent transition from being a highly insecure country to a secure country, from a disunited country to a united country, from corruption to a transparent country, from a country of lawlessness to a country of law and order. But in all this, it is important that we look at where we are today for people to understand 
the gravity of the journey we are going to take if we are going to transit. Where are we today? Nigeria has qualified to be a failed state. We have met the two or three biggest characteristics of a failed state. Number one is when you are no longer in charge of your territory. Today, we are among the top terrorized countries of the world. We are among the top kidnapping countries of the world. Bandit criminality, bandits have taken over some parts of this country. Nigerians are being killed daily. Nigerian being all sorts of criminality is going on daily. Even our most important source of foreign exchange revenue, oil, is today 80% stolen. That shows how bad it is. We are the only country, apart from Venezuela, who we know is their own is because of sanctions, that is not meeting up its OPEC quota. Every other country is begging for increase, but Nigeria is not meeting up its own. And you wouldn't believe the quantity that is missing. In July alone, our total average, our quota is 1.8 million. In July, our total average was 1,083,000 barrels a day. That means that in July, we lost 707 thousand barrels per day. If you multiply that by 20, 31 days, it will give you 22 million 227 barrels of oil that we lost. This is a country that needs dollar. If you sell it, if you sell that oil, if you sell the quantity we lost, this is July alone. If you sell it at the average price of $110, it will give you $2,450,000,000, which at our rate of exchange of $550, you lost, if you use $550, because I used an average of $550, you've lost $1,344,700,000,000. That is your country. That's what you lost in one month because of stealing. It is important that we know this. Number two item, number two item to show that we are first state is that you are no longer in control of your economy. Your economy today, today we have an economy that where we have over 100 million people living in poverty, your unemployment is one of the worst in the world because you have a combined unemployment of 50%, unemployment and unemployment. Out of 200 million Nigerians, 60% is supposed to be working. So you're supposed to have 120 million Nigerians working, but today Nigerians that are working are under 50 million. So 70 something million of Nigerians are not working, they are not productive, when you compare this to your productivity, you will see how low it is. But what is even worse, we're in a physical mess, total physical mess, because of all this. Between January this year and April, the total revenue of federal government of Nigeria is 1 trillion 630 billion naira. Their expenditure is 4 trillion 720 billion. If you minus this, we have a deficit of 300, 3 point, 3 trillion, 100 billion. That shows almost 20 percent, almost 200 percent is a deficit. And this is the crisis you face. How did we come here? It's a cumulative effect of leadership failure over the years. Because it's 10 percent, I'll stop here, I would have stopped our power. How did we come here? What are we going to do very quickly to come out of this? Very quickly, you need to have a visionary 
articulated, competent leadership to start turning around this. So next year, next year, the time is over, I'll take it there. But next year, the election you're going to have next year will not be about, remember, it is not about tribe, no religion, not connection, not entitlement. It must be election about character, competence, capacity, and commitment to deliver. <laughs>